Hi, this is Kerry Landholt. Today I'd like to talk about using CoffeeScript classes with AngularJS. I've been using AngularJS for a couple of years now and I've had great success using CoffeeScript. Uh, it's my preference, my personal preference rather, over JavaScript being concise, easy to write, and uh, I've just really kind of fallen in love with it. I write a lot less code. And I love the class syntax that CoffeeScript uh, provides. So I wanted to put these two together and give a little example on how you might go about using the two. So I'm using the atom.io or atom text editor here if you're interested. And what I like to do is write a little bit of CoffeeScript. So the typical way you might create a module or a controller in this case in CoffeeScript is do the boilerplate angular.module app or whatever your app is called controller in this case and I'll call it a home controller and I'll pass in maybe the scope okay and we'll just say scope dot name equals carry that's my name so I have a little watcher in the background that's going to compile this on the fly to JavaScript so as soon as I press save whoop, reload rather um, I get a couple things happening here the pane in the upper right you can disregard for now, but you'll see something change in the in a little bit. And the pane in the lower portion or the lower pane, you see the compiled JavaScript. Now I am using ng-min, which is a nice little library that is part of this compilation that provides me the ability to create uh, or to use numerous uh, parameters, uh, function parameters and have the uh, output use the array syntax. You can see the start of the array and the end of the array. That allows you to minify with, without uh, running into trouble. Because what Angular does is if you don't have this little reference here, it's going to use $scope and $log as lookup values in its internal dictionary to get the value of Scope, dollar scope and dollar log. And it, upon minification, what may happen is this will get re renamed to A and maybe this gets renamed to B. And locally that all works just fine. However, when it goes to look up A in Angular's dictionary, it's not going to find it. So what ng-min does is it adds the dollar scope and dollar log as string values using this array syntax which Angular supports and therefore it's safe to rename these uh, A and B or whatever your minifier does to it. So that's a really nice feature. So now let's go ahead and introduce CoffeeScript classes. The simplest way is to prefix the word class, uh, or I should say uh, introduce the word class. I'll hit enter here to get to a new line. And the constructor keyword, and I'll just indent uh, the last line there. So I've saved it and that's exactly what we have is we've introduced a CoffeeScript class. As you can see this didn't bias too much. Let's walk through what it did do however. Well one thing that's broken already is ng-min simply doesn't work. This isn't the format ng-min is looking for so it can't provide us the, those, the array syntax uh, helper. So let's move on. What it did do, however, and you know, we're using this nice constructor syntax that people that are used to writing classes might be familiar with, but it also introduced this underscore class interesting kind of side effect. Well, that's because Angular, not Angular, but CoffeeScript will introduce its own name if you didn't name your class. So let me provide a name. I'll just do home controller and I'll save it. And now it doesn't do the dollar or rather underscore class. It named it home controller and, and really the effect is the same. Still, we have that ng min problem. So what we would have to do in this case is we would have to introduce it ourselves. So I'm going to put the surrounding array syntax there. I'll put in our dollar scope because that's our first parameter we're passing in and then dollar log. Now let's save that. Now we get what we're looking for. The dollar scope, dollar log, but I'm, I'm adding code. 
I'm not able to take advantage of ng-min. I'm adding more code. So let's continue to investigate this. What you'll commonly see is you won't see classes embedded like I have here. Let's go ahead and remove the class itself from this code. So let me, I'm going to cut it and I'll go ahead and put back the home controller reference. Let me just kind of get that back on one line and I'll paste the class up there. This is more common what you might see or what you certainly what I prefer to, to write kind of my class separately and just reference it here inside this angular boilerplate setup. Now, if we look down here in the JavaScript, we have something that's definitely going to work. Um, you can see here the, the real simplistic angular dot module app controller, home controller, a couple parameters, and then a reference to the, to the home controller function here. Now that's all classes are is they are, functions. That's all it's going to return. And if you notice something interesting about this, it's an immediately evoked function expression. So we're setting home controller equal to a function that is then invoked. So it's going to return this uh, inner body. And therefore we're going to get dollar scope, dollar log. It will be provided those values through uh, Angular's injection system. Let's take this a step further now. What we want to really do is take a look and see what we can exclude. How, how can we really leverage the CoffeeScript class syntax, write less code, and subsequently write less Angular? So if we look at this code, we really have some, quite a bit of boilerplate uh, Angular code. All This whole line five here is really boilerplate. And let's kind of dissect this. Angular.modulapp.controller, blah, blah, blah. Let's first take this angular.module app. Now you will see some people, they'll assign a temporary variable and that's not, not so temporary, you know, describe why in a moment. And then they might reference it here. So if they uh, register additional uh, modules in the same file, they'll just do app.controller, app.service, app.directive, whatever it is they're creating. The problem with this approach and the reason I don't care for it is that this variable is really only good in the file that you are writing. So in this file right here on the upper left panel, it's fine. But when you want to leverage this across multiple files and you want to compile and concatenate and do all that, you now have to really introduce a global variable, app in this case, or whatever uh, you call it, my app. And I've seen some people do uppercase app uh, it, it really doesn't matter because you have the same problem. You've introduced a global variable in JavaScript, JavaScript, and that's really a big no-no. It's something certainly frowned upon. What I want to do is really get rid of this altogether. In fact, when I think about angular.module app or app or any of that business, to me that's more configuration because what we're doing in this case from an Angular perspective is declaring a module, a container, to place my controller in, my service in, my directive, or whatever module type or recipe type uh, you're concerned with. It, since it seems like configuration to me, I'd like to remove it completely. Just get rid of it. And let's let a build system take care of that. So now let's see what we have. Controller, home controller, the array syntax, and then the reference to the class. Well, if we start looking at the structure, start identifying some patterns, we can already see that I have the word controller right here in the class, simply because I've typed controller. Well, okay, if I'm okay with typing the word controller in the class name, let me get rid of controller here. I can just as say, just as easily say about service or greet service or something like that. And then I would have the word service and I can extract it. Uh, don't get me wrong, I'm not gonna go about extracting text from uh, this file, but stay with me for a moment. Now, what are we left with? Well, we're left with the controller name itself, home controller. Well, that's really close to what our class name is. There's a casing difference, but casing I can handle in a configuration file. So let's get rid of it. Now we have our parameters, you know, using that array syntax, so everything's minifiable, but I've got them here in my constructor function. 
let's get rid of them. Then the last thing I have is the class reference itself. Well, there it is. I already have it. I already know what it is. Let's get rid of it. So can I write that? Can I make just class home controller, uh, controller, constructor, and my parameters, and then my body of my controller? Can I write that? Well, let's save it. And the answer is no. Can't just do that. It's not enough. This is never going to get picked up by Angular. Because if you look at the compiled JavaScript in the, in the lower panel, there is no Angular mention here. Home controller is never going to be registered inside Angular. However, this is where we introduce a component that I wrote called ng-classify. Now, the whole point of ng-classify is to do exact, exactly what I've been leading up to. Leverage CoffeeScript classes and write a lot less Angular, a lot less boilerplate code. So this is available on GitHub. It's open source. ng-classify is the core library. And I have Grunt and Gulp wrappers um, to go along with it. So let's take a look at it. Let's see. The one thing I mentioned before is that, no, I'm not going to go through and look at text. I'm not going to go and grab text from the class name to determine or infer if it's a service or controller or a directive or something like that. However, we can leverage the extends keyword in the CoffeeScript class syntax. So now let's take a look at this. Class, home, extends, controller. I really have everything that I needed before. I have the name of the controller. I have the type. It, it is, in fact, a controller. I have my constructor parameters. I have everything I need. The only thing I don't have, the only thing I'm not providing, is anything directly related to Angular other than inferring this because I have the word controller or the, the word directive or the word service, uh, something like that. So as I mentioned before, what I feel, what I, I've felt for some time is that Angular.module app and or Angular.module my app or whatever you want to call it is really configuration. I may have a number of files that need to go into that module container and the fact that I have to describe the module container in each module I'm writing or each file I'm writing has always kind of rubbed me the wrong way. So let's save this. Now take a look at what we have. The compiled JavaScript is the same as we had before. I have this uh, a nice array syntax here, dollar scope, dollar log, reference to this home function, which is our class. Now it's called home instead of home controller because we're leveraging the extends keyword here. Now you'll see in the upper right pane, something is now different. These are no longer the same. They were the same in, uh, up until now because this is the kind of intermediate step prior to uh, comp compiling CoffeeScript to JavaScript. This is what ng-classify does. It, it is this uh, content here. So if you compare the upper right panel to the upper left panel, they are identical except for two pieces. This extends controller is gone. The extends keyword is really what allows us to take a handle, get a handle rather, and do what ng-classify needs to do. So the two things that are different, different is extends controller is gone, just the extends and whatever uh, module type it is, and the addition of this Angular boilerplate. So all that stuff we wrote before, initially, you'd no longer have to write. And let's just change something on the fly. Let's say I want to add another uh, parameter here. I'll say another service, save it. Now, of course, we get it right up here, but we also get it inside this uh, array syntax. So this is completely minifiable. Uh, you can see the, the uh, compiled uh, content in the lower panel. It's all there. Now, just as easily, I could turn this into a service. Now, dollar scope, it certainly is going to work for a service. So let's just kind of change it just to give us a taste of uh, what it's doing. And I'll just say log, info, uh, home service, instantiated. Okay, and we'll save it. And there it is. It registers as a service. You'll notice uh, something in addition. We have 
home service with a lowercase h. But we defined, I'll go over here, home with an uppercase h and extend service. Well, that is also configurable. Everyone has their own naming conventions and casing conventions. My convention is to lowercase the first letter and append the word service on the end of it for services. Now, if I made this a factory, and I'll save that, my convention is to have the an uppercase initial letter and not append anything. But this is completely configurable. So what happens if we add another class to the same file? Now this is something I don't really like to do, but if you need to do, do it, um, ng classify certainly supports it. So we'll add, add another constructor. I always like to use dollar log because it's harmless and allows us to, to write some amount of code. So uh, log info, whoops, info greet, I'm going to do it with my naming convention, greet service instantiated. Okay, save it. And you can see both of our classes are, are still in the code, in the compiled code, and both of those Angular module references are there. So everything works. Now, I've talked about uh, controller services and factories. The same thing works with uh, runs and configs. And uh, so here's an example of a config. So I'll extends config. I'll pull in the constructor and I'll say route provider. So what I'll do is this example would set up some routes. So I'll say route, route provider dot when and when it's home, for example. I want to use the home controller. So I'll define my controller and I'll say that's home controller. And let's save it. And here we go. It gave me a config. Notice one thing that's different between a config compared to a factory service controller is the name of the class really doesn't do anything. Angular doesn't reference this by name since it's just during setup. Uh, when Angular is bootstrapping, that's the only time it's used. You don't ever call out to this config, unlike factory service controllers and, and the like. But still, routes was used because it references the class. So you can see you can add these classes anywhere and uh, write a lot less JavaScript because you're simply using CoffeeScript and write a lot less Angular because you're using ng classify. Please let me know what you think of ng classify. I write a lot less code because of it. In fact, sometimes I've written modules where you don't even see any reference to Angular whatsoever. Not that that's a selling point, but just simply that I'm writing less code. It becomes more business logic rather than more boilerplate. Thanks very much. This is Kerry Lantel.